This 10 minute video has been prepared to accompany the public exhibition of the flood study as part of the Rye Flood Harmonisation Project. The video contains information about the development of the flood study as well as an overview of the results and applications and future work. Public exhibition period runs from the 25th of September to the 3rd of December 2023. The community is encouraged to provide feedback. Details can be found on Council's Have Your Say website. The report on exhibition focuses on flood risk within the City of Wright Council area, shown here in an aerial view. It covers suburbs such as Eastwood, Denniston, Meadowbank, Gladesville, Ride, Macquarie Park and Marsfield. There are a number of creeks within the City of Rye Council area. And the creeks flow into the Lane Cove River or Parramatta River. The creeks flowing into the Lane Cove River include Terry's Creek running along the Northwest Council boundary, Mars Creek, University Creek, Shrimpton's Creek, Industrial Creek, Porter's Creek, Page's Creek, Kitty's Creek, and Buffalo Creek. Creeks flowing into the Parramatta River include Glades Creek, Grove Creek, Charity Creek, and Archer Creek. The terrain and 14 major catchment boundaries can be seen here. This covers a large area of approximately 40 square kilometres. Flooding within the Rye Council area has previously been investigated across four separate areas. These are Eastwood and Terry's Creek, Macquarie Park, Buffalo and Kitty's Creeks, and creeks flowing to the Parramatta River. There are four existing flood studies that cover these four areas. These were undertaken between 2008 and 2014. As these studies are about 10 to 15 years old now, there is a need to update them. And these studies are also being consolidated into the Rhine Flood Harmonisation Study. This is the report on public exhibition, the flood study update. The updating aspect consists of building new flood models, utilising existing model elements where they're still valid, and utilising the latest guidelines and standards for flood modelling and design flood estimation. The harmonisation aspect means making sure that all the models across the four areas are built in the same way and use the same parameters. Previously, the studies were undertaken by different consultants all adopted a slightly different approach. These are the steps for undertaking a flood study. First is the data collection phase. We collect all relevant information, rainfall data, flood data and observations, existing flood models, stormwater infrastructure, terrain information, everything that we require. The next stage is to build the flood models. Let's have a look at an example and the sorts of things that go into a flood model. We'll zoom into Eastwood since the Eastwood CBD has known flood problems. To build the model, we start with the model domain, shown here in red. We add elements such as the terrain, buildings, and stormwater network, to name a few. We then apply flow to the model and it simulates what happens to the water in a flood event. The next stage is to calibrate the models. Calibration is the process whereby recorded rainfall is applied to the model and we adjust various modelling assumptions in order to improve the match against recorded flood data. We want to make sure that the model can replicate an actual flood event. This is an example of the November 2018 event in Eastwood. And here we have recorded flood levels around Rose Street. And we look at the difference between what the model says and what was observed. We can also compare the flood behavior to 
photographs and videos like this one. The results across a number of areas and different flood events indicated that the models do a good job at representing real life conditions. The next stage is design flood modeling. Here is where we simulate events with a certain probability of occurring that are used for future planning and development decisions. An animation of the 1 in 100 or 1% AEP flood shown here for Eastwood. This flood has a 1% chance of occurring in any given year. You can see that the model simulates flooding in Terry's Creek itself, that is, water rising from the creek. But it also simulates overland flooding that occurs when the capacity of the stormwater pipes and gutters is exceeded. And you can see water flowing down streets and across properties down toward the creek. This overland flow may cause nuisance flooding in gardens and along roadways but can also impact buildings above floor level. Across the Rye Council area, flooding is most likely from intense, short duration thunderstorms and from both mainstream and overland sources. The last stage is actually using the results. These are some of the mapping outputs from the flood study. Flood depth and level mapping, Flow Velocity Mapping Flood Hazard Mapping, which takes into consideration depth and velocity using evidence-based research to produce categories indicating safety to people, vehicles and buildings. And Hydraulic Categories, which classify the floodplain as floodway, flood storage or flood fringe areas. This mapping was undertaken across the whole council area and for a range of different flood sizes. They tell us about the flood behaviour and flood risks. These results help council and the community to understand the existing flood behaviour and areas of flood risk, provide up-to-date flood data to end users, to identify and assess potential flood risk management measures. This will be the next stage of the flood harmonisation project. And the results will enable future development planning, application of development controls and assessment of flood impacts. One of the key outputs of the flood study is the identification of lots where flood planning controls apply. The flood results were filtered to get rid of very shallow inundation to focus on areas where there is greater flood risk. The red lots in this image indicate those that are affected by the 1% AEP and PMF, or probable maximum flood. The green lots are those just affected by the PMF. Typically, for those lots in red, if you want to redevelop on that site, Council can apply controls to make sure that the proposed development has considered potential flooding in terms of safety to occupants, inundation of the building, and making sure that neighbours are not adversely affected. While the flood study is currently on public exhibition, the next phase of the project is the floodplain risk management study and plan. This is where we identify and assess potential flood risk mitigation measures, such as infrastructure, like drainage upgrades, channels, detention basins and levees, or changes to flood planning controls, policies and zoning, or flood warning, evacuation, emergency management and community education. These are all ways in which flood risk in the Rye Council area can be reduced. The public exhibition period runs until the 3rd of December 2023. The report can be accessed through Council's website on the Have Your Say page. Please use the details on that webpage to submit any feedback you may have. 
If you have further queries or would like to find out more about the study, please use the Have Your Say webpage to book an appointment at an information session. Alternatively, you can email floodstudy2023 at ride.nsw.gov.au with any questions you may have.